Welcome, IP family. We are back to break down the latest and greatest Shark Tank episodes. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I am an almost 10 year intellectual property attorney dealing with everything from patents to trademarks. And I break down the Shark Tank episodes to kind of see what's the intellectual property in there. Is it a trademark? Is it a patent? A lot of times you can't even get an investment if you can't protect your invention, protect your product, protect the business and the IP. So, uh, Let's get started. Hey Sharks, I'm Justin from Orange County, California, seeking $50,000 for 10% of my company. Imagine 000. you're hosting a dinner party and right as you're about to serve the food, an unexpected guest arrives. Go ahead Sharks, lift your plate covers and dig in. Oh. <gasps> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh. Bugs. Oh my God. <laughs> that yeah. scared the crap out of me. Never had that. Now, Mr. Wonderful might be all about crushing cockroaches, but what about those of us who'd rather not take a life? That's where Cup of Bug comes in. Huh. We've made it uh, more convenient to catch a bug than to kill it. And, and this is actually interesting that I'm going to kind of put the screen back on me for a second. This is how great IP is, is the fact that whether it's a bug catcher machine, a bug device, bug propellant, it's so many, uh, you know, apparatuses, devices, uh, things that you can protect, that you can patent that solves a need. Again, that's the big thing. If this thing solves a need of the people, which ultimately the people will decide uh, by how much they buy it on whether or not this is a, a you know, a product that uh, kind of solves a, a big need in society. And kind of, I, I didn't take, talk about this before, but my three criteria I look at as I analyze these videos and analyze just kind of products that I see on a day-to-day -day basis is how simple is it? Again, simple is best. If you have this complex product that takes all this manufacturing time and money and energy uh, and can break down easily because it has all these parts, that's a that's an issue. Some of the most profitable, some of the most, uh, th just the best products, the, the most efficient, the most effective products are simple. They're pretty straightforward. So my first criteria is is it simple? The second criteria is, is it effective? Ultimately, uh, to make money on a product, it has to be effective at the things that it's doing. So we'll just figure out here in a second by his sales and the other things that he goes through is how effective is the product. And then number three, what's the market size? If you have a simple product, if you have an effective product, but the market isn't big enough, then you know, unfortunately, yeah, you will make some money, but you're not going to be able to be extremely profitable. And also, if the market is big enough, but you have a lot of Kind of players in that market that's another thing so again when you're looking at market you have to look at is the market big enough and if it is big enough is it saturated because if it's an oversaturated market then uh you know yeah you can make some money yeah you can make some headway but it's going to be a lot more difficult compared to if it's a market that hasn't been tapped or it only it's only a few players in that market so let's continue to see what uh what what he's talking about with his bug device and kind of keep those three criteria that i look for in mind the screen again here there we go there's there's that's okay start over that's good you there's, have more convenient to capture a bug than to, than kill, to it. kill it that's right using it is super simple just place the cup over the bug and pull the handle back this closes the lid and now your bug is ready to be released back into nature good for you or on your neighbor's doorstep it's up to you <laughs> Cup of Bug features a long arm and a tilt mechanism that works like your wrist, allowing you to catch bugs from floor to ceiling. Okay. <laughs> we even included a brush for getting bugs from out of corners. Think of Cup of Bug as an extension of your wrist. Um, and stop it here again. This, this is another big thing. Maybe number one is kind of being able to pitch a pitch. You know, being able to pitch your product, pitch your potential investment is a, a art in itself. So. Yeah, and it seems like he's maybe stumbling through it a little bit, which is okay. I, I think the more and more he does these, the more he will get better at it. Uh, so, I mean, again, this can be from kind of talking to interviewing people who have been on Shark Tank. They This is the first time this has happened, and it can be a, a very intense uh, intense thing being on there and in a Shark Tank sweating, and you have you know, what some will say the future of your company in the hands of these different sharks. So uh, it, it can be uh, very stressful very intense. So the fact that he's doing that, uh, or just kind of maybe stumbling the way through it is not that big of an issue. And I, I have no doubt that the more and more he does this, these things, the better. 
The other thing that I want to talk about as it relates to the patent side of things, and I, I would guess that he has a patent pending thing. When I'm looking at the device as a patent attorney who, again, has almost 10 years of writing patent applications, I write 50 to 60 patent applications a year. He has some things that I, I look at and I'm like, OK, I haven't seen before. You have, like you said, the arm, which I'm assuming is telescoping. Uh, you have this kind of capturing apparatus, if you will, that you kind of pull on a handle and it uh, comes back. And then when a bug is in between or in the cavity or in a compartment or space, you release the handle and it captures it. And therefore you can kind of release it back out to the environment or whatever the case may be, which is cool. Cause now it's not necessarily killing a bug. It's just capturing it so you can release it. So that's actually a pretty cool thing. Although I, I like my, my, uh, my, bug, my bugs dead. But the other thing is that brush component. I think that's an interesting feature of that is uh, something that he can you know, potentially protect as well. So when I'm looking at this stuff, I'm looking at what are the different parts, what are the different structures that are panable? And the fact that, again, the telescoping arm and coupled with this whole compartment, this apparatus that captures the bug, captures the bug live, and you know it, it kind of goes through a process to do that with the handle. And again, the, the feature that kind of slides back and forth once you press the handle, and then it's this, this brush that if you have a bug in a corner, you can kind of pull it back so that you can actually use and capture the bug. Those are different features that as a patent attorney, I'm like, okay, this is kind of something once you add these, maybe these features in and of itself or individually may not be something that you can protect. But once you start adding these different features, one on top of the, uh, the other and combining them, maybe you have some some something to stand on. So it'd be interesting on whether or not he has a patent pending or an issue patent on this. And I'm not sure if that'll come up, but let's kind of just pay pay attention to that aspect of it. We share my screen here. There we go. You're good. It's okay. Sorry, you so know nervous. what? Take a breath. Take a breath. I'm so nervous. And um, then think of it again. Whether it's catching bugs from off your ceiling or catching cockroaches from your kitchen floor, Cup of Bug is the hero we've all been waiting for. So, sharks, who's ready to see what all the buzz is about and infest in Cup of Bug? Good job, Good job. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. In my household, I am the bug guy. My wife, my kids, yeah, women not go freak. anywhere near a bug. So it's like, it's Dad, you know, from exactly. the whole house. So how much does this cost? We retail it for $40, including shipping. What does it cost you to make? It costs us to make uh, $10 landed and then about $7 um, to bad, ship Mark. it. Justin, do you have any sales? We do, yeah. We did a Kickstarter that did about 800 units. So that was $28,000 roughly. Um, right yeah. And when was that? What month? That was last year um, in uh, March. And then this year, we started selling our first production run in beginning of June. So it's been a little bit over three months, and we've done about 1,200 units in sales. Nice. So what is that in dollars? That's $48,000, give or yeah, take. and that's Just, all been organic. Justin, here. how did you, uh, are you a bug guy? Is this something you came up with for or a fun? bug hater. <laughs> how did, yeah. Tell us the story. I would be more on the bug sympathizer side. Um, I um, studied mechanical engineering, and then afterwards, I went to work for my dad and we designed electric motors. I decided that I wanted to follow in his footsteps and become my own entrepreneur. So every night I would just keep studying engineering through free online my courseware. Hero. My hero. I know you guys are lifelong learners too. I'm the same way. And eventually I was able to get the skills to design something like Cup of Bug. I am just terrified of bugs, even from a child. And and let me stop it here. And I, hey, shout out. My, my background is in mechanical engineering. Shout out to Michigan State. Earned my mechanical engineering degree from Michigan State. And this kind of just shows you about IP and intellectual property and the fact that anybody can do this. The fact that he, you know, he had an engineering degree. Seems like he kind of learned and was reading on, okay, how can I take something that I hate, which in this case is bugs, and make an invention out of it, make a business out of it, and sell to the people. The fact that he's Again, I'll be interviewing someone who has a Kickstarter campaign that hasn't released yet on luxury toilet paper. So check that out when it comes out. But the fact that he seemed to be have been successful, not only on, with the Kickstarter campaign, but also successful when he started doing his production runs, 1,200 units. Again, that, that's something. That's nothing to sneeze at. So it seems like it's a pretty simple device so far, a very simple. And the fact that this thing can not only get bugs off the floor, but also get bugs off the ceiling. Hey, $40, I would imagine that. Everyone in America, especially the women, hey, that's a well-invested $40.
you can stand far away from the bug. You don't have to kind of get all close to the bugs and things like that, which, again, I know people hate. So I'm sure that people will want to invest $40 into this bug capturing device so that they can uh, capture the bugs. Again, me personally, I would like to see the bug dead. I don't want to see it kind of live and and but whatever the case may be, uh, $40 is good. It seems like he's selling units. It seems like it's pretty simple. It doesn't have all these parts and gadgets to the fact that it can break easy and uh, and, and, and whatnot. So that's a, a good thing. Uh, it seems like it's effective so far based on his demonstrations. And uh, it'll be interesting to show, see the market and what, what is the bug capture market. I see a lot of, you know, you see a lot of pest guys that come spray solution within a house on the interior as well as the exterior to actually kill the bugs. That's actually... That's interesting because I don't necessarily want to be walking around my house or exterior of the house and see dead bugs lying around. So that's an interesting thing. But the fact that, especially with like cockroaches, because from my understanding, if you like step on it or can kill it, that may not be a good thing as far as kind of bringing more and more. So if you can kind of capture these things and kind of send them on their way outside, then that can be a good thing. But it seems like he has some good stuff going so far. Uh, again, it's simple. It seems to be effective in the market. It'd be interesting to see what the bug capturing, killing market is. I would imagine that it's a lot uh just kind of based, based on the pet solutions i haven't seen these bug devices or apparatus so he may be on to something with that but the big thing is the fact that this guy was an engineering student i think he was saying and he spent that off to an actual business so for all you engineering students and you don't necessarily have to always go to corporate america and kind of use those talents in a corporate setting you can use those the, the skill set that you learned to engineer to produce your own product get a patent on it and create a business out of it and that's again, he's an engineer, but seems like he read up on this stuff to learn. So even if you're not an engineer, if you're an everyday person that hate bugs or hates or you know has a solution or something, then if you read up on it, you can create a product from it and uh get it protected and start selling these things and create a business off of it. So again, he's an engineering student, but or engineer, but you don't have to necessarily be an engineer for you to have some of the success and kind of build a business off your product that's solving a problem in the marketplace. So let's get back to it and see uh what they say let me share my screen again this is actually a pretty interesting as i, I grew it. up i just started to feel bad you know squishing them i feel bad when i squish a bug too that could be an ancestor of mine for all i know what other things do you design um yeah i've done a lot of board game accessories i did like planters certain desk organizers <laughs> basically anything that's under like the nerd umbrella you're a serial inventor i like justin this is this yeah. one of them what is this no, that's just something I specifically designed for you guys today. You designed you this? You designed this? Yeah, it's a yeah. Bug -a that is so cool. I it's think, it's that, I think that's so cool. It's a catapult for bugs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You guys are welcome to have it if you Wait, want. Wait, it doesn't yeah. come? You're not going to sell these? You're not I mean, make... we could expand the product you line. You could. Yeah. Oh, you could definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all your products, well, are you most excited about this? Yeah, this is really not just a product for me, but it's a showcase of all the skills I've put into my studies in engineering. I love it. I'll, you know what? So this includes you. This the the it's ten percent of you, right? Fifty k. It's ten percent of not just cup of bug, but like the future of my entrepreneurial experience. So I'll give you fifty k for twenty percent. Ooh. Wow. Yes. Do it. I'll do the same. No, the he's not going to do it. <laughs> just me. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we get one? Why don't we give him a little bit more? I, I want to stop because this is an interesting thing. The fact that this guy, he's an entrepreneur. So the fact that, you know, when you start having success and things like that, and you think about kind of expanding your product line, different products or whatnot, it, it, this guy has, it seems like he has no short ideals. He essentially invented a, a bug catapult for, for you to, uh, for them to have for free. This is something that he could potentially be selling. So Mark is, you know, his entrepreneur spirit, his uh, design uh, spirit, he, he, he sees that he sees like, Hey, this guy has no shortage of ideas that he can use for expanding product lines, even from where maybe more, you know, different businesses. He's seeing that he's right away 50,000 for 20 percent. So it will be interesting to see whether the rest of the sharks come in and they give him what he's looking for, which is, again, 50K for 10 percent of the product. But the fact that uh, Mark is seeing right away that, hey, man, this guy is on to something, not just with this particular bug product, but with future bug products or future products in general. This is somebody I want to be uh, in business with. It actually kind of reminds me of the Steve Wozniak, Steve uh, uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, I think Steve Wozniak, Wozniak if, I'm, if I'm not if I'm pronouncing his first name correct. It's reminding me of that where Wozniak had all these ideals and he was like the brains behind the operations. But obviously, we know Steve Jobs was like the, uh, you know, the, the visionary, if you will, that kind of brought Apple to life, so to speak. So this guy, maybe 
with the right partner can can be something big. So let's get back to it and uh see how things end up here. There we go. 60k for 30%. Are you guys in together? Are you going no. in together? together? No. 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 Yeah. I want you to myself. Ah, <laughs> oh my greedy. God. Would either of you be willing, since you're going up in equity, would you be willing to go up? I'll go up to 75K. How's that? Mm. For 20%. Geek to geek. Geek to geek. All right. Mark, join me in my entrepreneurial journey. Let's go. Thank Let's you so go. much. That's great. Let's yeah. go. That's great. Woo! Thank Congratulations. you so much. That's, That's awesome. We'll have so much Appreciate fun. Appreciate it. Well, yeah. I'll be throwing projects after you left and right. And anytime you have that. an idea, you can run it by me code, hardware, fun stuff. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good Thanks job. Justin. Justin. Thank you guys so much. And that was actually one of the more straightforward Shark Tanks uh, that I have seen. Uh, that's actually a, a pretty straightforward Shark Tank right away. And I think he actually got the right partner with Mark. I think Mark is uh, going to use this guy well beyond just this bug capturing device, which I think is actually pretty interesting and will sell a lot. In and of itself, I actually want to kind of go check out the website. There we go. Let me share my screen here, because typically, and again, they didn't get to it on a on a show, but typically, there we go. Typically, you they they would ask, "Hey, is it protected?" This is definitely some as a patent attorney that I can see them having a patent on, or at least patent pending. Uh, typically, I, I I like to see as a patent attorney, intellectual property attorney. I would like to see it uh any pan pending or, or or issue patents on the website. Uh that's not always the case for whatever reason. Let me click through a couple of the headings to see if they uh if they have it on there. Couple bug. I think the couple bug is actually it can be a trademark as well. So I'm not sure if he has that name trademark, but couple bug can definitely be a, a trademark name. Let's see here. I'm not seeing it so far. I'm not seeing any patents listed or patent pending on the website, uh, which again is obviously not the end of the world, but as a patent attorney, I would like to see it because it kind of puts people on notice if, you know, the name of the game is the copy. Once you start becoming successful at this thing and selling a lot of products, you will have copycats. I just invented, I mean, I just interviewed the uh, inventor of the selfie stick and he kind of talked at length about the copycats in China, he was actually at a trade show in China and walked past the table and he kind of played dumb. Like, oh, man, this is an interesting product. Who invented it? And the guy was like, hey, I invented it. And and obviously they went back and forth. And that was an interesting thing. Uh, but again, you would get a lot of copycats. And the fact that you have a product, I mean, a patent on your product, it would not only help out. But if you're selling this thing on Amazon, which it would be interesting to see if he does. And I would highly recommend him sell it on Amazon. Amazon has this. Kind of this feature, if you will, if you see a copycat or knockoff, all you have to do is show Amazon your patent and it will get the copycat taken down instantly. Now, you may have to do that with each copycat that comes up. But again, that's a lot less expensive or inexpensive process compared to spending tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on uh, court costs with trying to you know, suit copycats. If you're selling this thing on Amazon, you can get a copycat uh, product taken down instantly if you have the patent. So obviously we know that's another uh benefit of having a patent again i'm not saying it on the website which is uh again not a a big issue let's see the door is like yeah i'm not seeing it three inches i finally got back home yeah that's no problem but again i i definitely would like to see it so uh i mean it, it, i guess it is what it is but hey if you got something out this video please hit the subscribe button hit, please hit the like button leave a comment on what you like about the video what you like about the product maybe what you don't like about the video or maybe don't like about the product i welcome your feedback on this i'm trying to provide you guys value from an intellectual property attorney perspective with these different uh products and pitches on shark tank to kind of see hey what is something that is panable what is something that may not be panable and uh you know even trademark if you got a i think couple bucks like i said this is something that he can get a trademark name on it i'm all about building brands building businesses and uh protecting ip is a big part of that especially when you're talking about getting uh getting investments uh, from different investors or even trying to sell the product they want to know that they have something that is protected so until next time hope you enjoyed something out of this video
Take care.